state. Storm surge across south and southwest Florida ranged from four to eight feet. Monroe County experienced an estimated 10 feet of surge at landfall. Miami-Dade experienced approximately four feet of storm surge. What's interesting about the storm surge is it's totally different than Andrew. Uh, a lot of us remember Andrew when we didn't see the storm surge in Andrew. It was a wind, more of a wind event. In Tampa, we're seeing two to four feet of storm surge right now, and this will last throughout today. We're seeing surge of three to six feet along the Big Bend. And if you remember the Big Bend and further in the Panhandle last year in Irma, got significant storm surge and we, see, we saw a lot of damage. In central, in, the, in central Florida, the Orlando area, we're seeing flooding due to a torrential rain of more than a foot. In Jacksonville and Northeast Florida, storm surge is three to five feet on top of more than a foot of rainfall, which is causing record and historical flooding along the St. Johns River. The other also explain, explained to me this morning in a weather briefing that uh, Hurricane uh, Jose uh, is also pushing water into the northern part of our state, which is which is preventing the water from flowing out as fast. I spoke to Jacksonville Mayor Lenny Curry this morning and assured him that resources are being deployed. Fish and Wildlife Commission immediately deployed three search and rescue teams with 22 officers and 10 boats that were pre-staged in the region to Jacksonville. We're going to do everything we did. The way I look at it is, as governor and all of us think this way, we want to keep everybody safe through this storm and want to keep everybody safe back after this storm and we get everybody back to a normal life as quickly as possible. We've also deployed a 25 person team from the State Emergency Operations Center to the Emergency Operations Center in Putnam, Duval and Clay counties in response to this historic flooding. We will continue to send resources to Jacksonville and any other, any other community in need. Rainfall exceeding a foot in many communities in Northeast, Central and Southeast Florida, Southwest Florida. Fortunately, the heaviest rain has cleared the state. However, this rain caused flash flooding in Northeast Florida. Rivers across the state continue to rise, and standing water remains an issue over the entire peninsula. The biggest threat <clears throat> for this week as Irma leaves Florida will be river flooding, and most of that's going to be in the northern part of the state. Stay attuned, stay attuned to local advisories for river flood watches and warnings. Families in southeast and northwest Florida, as well as the Tampa Bay area, need to be especially vigilant as local rivers could remain at flood levels into this weekend. And we'll see, we generally see that in the I-4 corridor north. The heaviest, the heaviest winds have now left Florida, but the entire peninsula experienced at least tropical force winds with hurricane gusts being felt as far east and north as Jacksonville. Thankfully, the threat of tornadoes has diminished. We've received seven reports of tornadoes, including two in Brevard County. The National Weather Service is working to confirm these reports. Given this weather report, if your family and you and your family have evacuated, it's extremely important that you check with local officials before returning home to make sure you can safely do, do so. Don't go back, don't, don't think just because this thing packed, you can run home, or passed, you can run home. We've got, we've got down power lines all across the state. We've got roads that are impassable still across, across the state. We've got debris all over the state. Our goal again is don't put any more lives at risk. We already went through this horrendous storm. Don't put your life at risk because of down power lines, debris, uh, um, impassable roads. This morning I had the opportunity to, to travel with the Coast Guard and Emerald Schultz to survey damage throughout the, the west coast of Florida and through the Keys. I want to thank the Coast Guard uh, for this opportunity. And here's what we saw. <clears throat> we saw we saw the, the the remnants of the storm surge along the west coast, but we didn't see what we, I didn't see the damage I thought I would see. We clearly saw uh, homes that were messed up. We clearly saw uh, roofs that were off. We clearly saw boats out of the place and things like that, but I thought we would see more damage. And we, there's still flooding, there's still sand on the roads and things like that, but on the west coast, uh, and this is confirmed by the mayors I've spoken to the, today, uh, it's not as bad as we thought the storm surge would do. Now, when you get to the Keys, uh, we were able to fly into uh, the Naval Air Station in, in Key West, which was, uh, which, um, as of just a few hours before we landed, had significant water still on it. But they worked uh, to clear that. We went over all that area. We saw a lot of boats um, uh, wash ashore. We saw any, basically, almost every uh, trailer park, they're overturned. See, I don't, I don't think I saw one trailer park that every, almost everything wasn't overturned. We still saw a lot of flood damage, and from talking to um, uh, the officials down in the Keys, the water is not working, the sewer is not working, and there's no electricity. 
So it's it's very tough. Uh, the National Guard uh, and this is the Adjutant General uh, Michael Calhoun. They've already they've already gone all the way down to the Keys, and all the bridges are passable. The roads are passable. However, there's clearly some bit bridge damage. There's clearly road damage, but you can you can get down there and and, and traffic. There's not a lot of traffic, which is good. Uh, it's it's uh, it's it's moving. Um, uh, my heart goes out to the people in the Keys. I mean, it's there's devastation. Um, it's it's uh, and you know I, I just I just hope everybody um, you know survived. It's uh, it's 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 horrible what we saw. Um, I know for our entire state, but especially for the Keys, it's going to be a long road. There's a lot of damage. Um, I want every. I know everybody wants to get back to normal. Um, I know everybody wants to get started, but again, we gotta. You gotta be patient. You gotta get the first responders in the keys. We gotta get the water going again. We gotta get electricity going again. We gotta get the sewers going again. It's gonna take a lot of time. I can tell you, everybody at the local level, the state level, and the federal level, everybody's uh, working hard. Our brave members of local, state, and federal law enforcement, the National Guard, military members have been working around the clock to save, save people alive. Um, we've got rescue teams with all sorts of equipment trying to make sure we don't have any, any we don't lose anybody. Um, if, uh, if anybody's in harm's way, you, you can call your local law enforcement, you can call the state emergency hotline, which is 800-342-3775. Somebody will show up. Um, we're working with FEMA. I can tell you the, um, the White House has been outstanding. I've talked to, uh, I talked to President Trump three times yesterday. I talked to Administrator uh, Brock Long with FEMA already today. I talked to him multiple times yesterday. I can tell you, uh, I've talked to so many cabinet members. Uh, I was with Vice. I talked to Vice President Pence yesterday. The White House and everybody at the federal level is showing up, and they are going to. My belief is they're going to show up, and they're going to do everything they can. They're going to. We've got, and I'll talk about a little bit the uh, the, re the missions, the uh, the resources they're providing. Um, the let's see. DOT is working hard to clear the roads, inspect the bridges all across the state. We need to, DOT to inspect the bridges before people go back to these barrier islands and places like that. It's a top priority. It was a top priority after Matthew. If you don't mean to be on the roads, don't get out. I mean, there, it's still, um, there's still more, uh, again, there's power lines, all sorts of things like that that we're working on. Um, let me just go on down. I've never used this to do this before. <laughs> um, the U.S. Navy, Navy, the Coast Guard, everybody's going to be providing resources. The Navy has deployed the USS Iwo Jima, the USS New York, uh, and, the, and the carrier Abraham Lincoln uh, to help with uh, search and rescue and a lot of other things. Um, power outages. We're, we have about 65 percent of the state out without power. Uh, it's going to take us a long time. Uh, to get power back. I've been talking to the utilities. I'm having daily calls with the utilities to get the power back on. Uh, they're going to do everything we can. I've been talking to nursing homes all morning. I've been talking to assisted living. Everybody needs their power back on. The, I can tell you that uh, they, they're bringing in 23,000 members. This is just what the utilities are doing, not including what the federal government's doing, not including the support of the military. Um, fuel. Uh, we're doing everything we can to get fuel back in the state. As you all know, we had uh, fuel shortages last week. We had outages. Uh, we had a lot of shortages. We, um, the two big ports are Tampa and, uh, and Port Everglades. Both of them have fuel in their tanks that they had to have in the tanks uh, during the hurricane. We're getting that out through, um, uh, through our carriers. We're giving them uh, law enforcement escorts. We're doing the same with the utilities to get the utility trucks out as much as possible. We pre-positioned as many as we can. Some we couldn't. We ended up out of the state and we're getting those down here as much as possible. I just tell you that everybody is going to work hard. Uh, but the way I think about it is we got to keep everybody safe. We've got to get um, we've got to get our hospitals back open. We've got to get our fuel back here. We've got to get our roads open. Uh, we got to get everybody their electricity back. And I can't tell you anybody that's not working. Uh, my experience is everybody is is working their tail off. And I and I'm unfortunately everybody's going to have to be patient because it's going to be a lot of work to get this done. This is not an uh, this is not uh, an insignificant storm. Uh, this impacted our and and the, what's different here is it impacted our state. You could usually preposition assets on one half of the state or the other. This one you couldn't because it was coming all the way down the state. So it was, it was a lot of work. So uh, I want to thank everybody, starting with the president. I want to thank everybody at the federal government. I want to thank everybody at the local government. I want to thank everybody at the state government. They have busted their rear, uh, keeping us all safe. So now it's my distinct opportunity to introduce somebody I've been, 
I've enjoyed uh, traveling with today, and I know that um, with his leadership, the Coast Guard is going to be an unbelievable partner uh, in this. Admiral Schultz. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. As our Acting Secretary, Secretary Elaine Duke, said this morning, the Department of Homeland Security has been preparing for Irma to arrive first in the Caribbean and here in Florida for the good part of more than a week. The Coast Guard has been reconstituting our forces today. We've got our first aircraft back here in Miami in Clearwater, uh, helicopters that arrive from sea base cutters, and we'll be reconstituting our force in force, bringing our people back into the state. This has been a very challenging storm in the fact that it covered the entire state. And our business model essentially is we flow our resources away so we can be the first back. This storm posed some challenges there. Uh, requests for search and rescue so far have not have been very, very, very low. Um, we've had an exceptional and joined an exceptional partner with partnership with a very capable Florida emergency management team with our DOD, Department of Defense, and National Guard partners, and uh, with state and local agencies, first responders. And uh, the Coast Guard remains committed to supporting the state of Florida and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and I'll stand by for any questions. Thank you. The, um, as you all know, we had a significant evacuation effort in the state. Our uh, highway patrol did an unbelievable job keeping the roads open, uh, making sure evacuation roads were open. Uh, we, of course, had, had to uh, add some uh, contra lanes, or not contra lanes, but shoulders. Uh, but there, our highway patrol did a great job. Uh, so now we have Major General, I mean, we have, uh, Major Pietra here from Highway Patrol. Good afternoon and thank you very much, Governor. We appreciate your guidance, leadership, and support throughout this entire process. It's been overwhelming. The Admiral, General, the support of the military personnel that are supporting local law enforcement, our first responders, has been nothing short of spectacular. On behalf of the Florida Patrol, we would like to urge all motorists in the South Florida area, Monroe, Miami-Dade, through Broward County, to please avoid any unnecessary travel on our roadways. Help law enforcement, our first responders, and all of our recovery personnel, the fuel tankers, the utility trucks, and everyone else that's going to be involved in this lengthy process. Please assist us by staying off the roadways unless it's absolutely necessary, and most of all, overnight to uh, comply with the curfews that are in place. It will greatly enhance and help us accomplishing getting everyone back to a normal way of life. Thank you. I called up 7,000 members of our National Guard. Uh, the National Guard shows up when, uh, when uh, there's a crisis. Uh, they've been deployed over 100 times since 9-11, but in crises like this, they always show up. We're also getting National Guards from around the country. Uh, here we have Major General Michael Calhoun. Good afternoon. Thank you, Governor. First, I'd like to thank you for your leadership, sir, and being proactive in this event and getting us pre-staged. i also like to thank the Coast Guard, along with some of our other um, sister services, for our support today and getting us down so we can evaluate the common operating picture. The Florida National Guard is fully activated. As of now, it's roughly 8,000 guardsmen on ground participating in this event. We're, we're, we've got 2,000 guardsmen in over 200 shelters of the 500 shelters that we have open. We've got 900 plus guardsmen in the immediate area with another 500 coming tonight. As the governor mentioned, we did go all the way down to the Keys. There's light traffic, but we sent a small engineer asset along with them to ensure that the roads are clear in the debris. And right now it seems to be working smoothly. We'll also have search and rescue. If they're not on the ground in the Keys right now, a bended search and rescue with Fish and Wildlife, Florida National Guard, and Urban Search and Rescue. Sir, thank you very much, Penny. The federal government is going to be a great partner, and one of the reasons is we have, you've, you've sent wonderful people to Congress. So now we're going to hear from Congresswoman Ileana Ross Layton. Thank you so much. Uh, although we uh, we thank our first responders each and every day, today 9/11 is a especially poignant day, and we thank uh, the firefighters, the police officers, all law enforcement personnel who walked into. Uh, uh, what was sure to be uh, the, the day of their death. And uh, that's the kind of sacrifice uh, uh, law enforcement and our military officials make each and every day. So we thank all of the brave men and women standing behind us uh, that make uh, every day possible for us to live in, uh, in safety and without fear. Uh, I want to tell the governor that when uh, Dexter and I, we were survivors of Hurricane Andrew 25 years ago, living in the same house. And boy, when you compare the federal, state, and local response during Andrew, before, during, and after the storm to today with Hurricane Irma, it's been a, uh, no pun intended, a sea change in a positive way. It's been coordinated, it's been seamless, 
I know that uh, constituents are frustrated with the lack of gas and the lack of electricity, but it's been a big problem. It was a huge storm. It's going to take us a while to dig out of this. But uh, uh, Carlos Grubello and I are determined to go back to uh, D.C. and work with our colleagues to find the funds needed for the hurricane relief efforts. We found it for uh, Hurricane Harvey. We're going to band together and find it for uh, the residents or who are survivors of, uh, of Hurricane uh, Irma. Para nosotros es un placer y un honor darle las gracias a las personas All right, que Congresswoman Ileana ross Layton joining Governor Rick Scott and Coast Guard officials bringing us up to date on the recovery effort after Hurricane Irma, now a tropical storm. Uh, we are awaiting another news conference, a briefing by the Broward Emergency Operations Center. Uh, Mayor Barbara Sharif is expected to address the uh, public about efforts in Broward County. Uh, when that news conference begins, we will bring it to you live. All right, uh, just uh, summarizing what uh, Governor Rick Scott said, he uh, brought us up to date on the uh, storm surge totals in Monroe County. He said 10 feet of storm surge in some parts. The worst part uh, near Key West, as we know that storm came ashore at Kudjo Key uh, yesterday morning, and uh, there are reports in parts of Monroe County of 10 feet of, seas of uh, storm surge. Also in uh, Miami-Dade County, four feet of storm surge in Jacksonville, Three to five feet of storm surge plus record rainfall uh, is now causing flooding along the St. John's River. Let's go back to Governor Rick Scott. Again. Oh, it's north of the Keys. Yeah, if you get, if you get, um, what you saw in Key West is um, you saw the boats damaged, you saw some houses damaged, you saw some roofs damaged. But as you get, you go up towards Marathon, you saw any trailer park. I mean, is. It's, it's, I don't think I saw a trailer park where it seemed like everything wasn't turned over. Uh, you saw some flooding. You saw, um, you know, homes with the, you know without their roofs and things like that. You saw lots of boats damaged. Um, so, uh, but you, uh, that's where I saw the worst damage. You could clearly see the storm surge. Uh, now, you know, it. Um, the, the positive is, you know. Um, I thought it was going to be even worse as far as, um, you know, 15 foot of storm surge, you know, so uh, I hope every, you know, I just hope everybody survived. No, no, but I'll tell you what, what uh, I appreciate the president. Uh, he did a pre landfall declaration and he did a major declaration. Uh, he did a pre landfall uh, uh, right after I asked him, I think the day I asked him, and then he did. Um, uh, the uh, the major declaration, uh, the same day I asked him, the, the, the uh, Homeland Security, FEMA, the President, the Vice President, they've just been great partners. We are sending, we have rescue teams going out just to make sure. Um, you know, my, I was, um, you know, the flooding in Jacksonville, uh, we sent a lot this morning because we saw so much flooding there. Uh, so I know we have teams out there, and, and but I don't I don't have any uh, personal knowledge right now. Somebody's still uh, still stranded, but I know we have rescue teams out. The the uh, the local officials will announce any uh, fatalities. Are you prepared for the influx of birds to evacuate and come back down the state? There's not a lot of gas in the turnpike or the other station. Step one, we got to get the roads open. Uh, so, uh, highway safety, uh, Department of Transportation is working hard to do that, especially the evacuation routes. Number two, uh, we've got to get the fuel back. Uh, we, um, we're working to make sure Port Tampa and, and Port Everglades get open so we can get the tankers in. There's tankers ready to come in uh, to bring a lot of fuel. Uh, so, the, uh, but that will take uh, some period of time because not only do we get, have to get the fuel in, then we got to get the fuel to the gas station. So, that's going to take a few days to get caught up because people bought so much gas. Uh, and I'm sure driving back, they're going to buy a lot of gas again. But right now, the, the big risk you've got is on top of those things, you got to be careful. There's so many power down power lines. You know, do you want to go to a house when you don't have any power? Uh, we've, we've, um, so the, and then there's just because we get the evacuation routes, we still have the local roads. And I know I've talked to the uh, mayors around the state today, and they're all working hard uh, to get the roads clean. I've talked to sheriffs today, and they're doing the same thing. But there's a, there's a lot to prepare before people rush back to their homes. Governor, 
you know, the, here's the test. The test is, it, 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 you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want one fatality. You know, I don't want anybody to, I don't want anybody to die. So I hope everybody listened to what we were talking about. We'll find out over time if people did or not. I, I remember, um, you know, these days run together. But I remember uh, the morning of the uh, when the hurricane was hitting, um, the roads were empty, and so I think people did. Uh, did leave their homes and get off the roads. We opened almost, I think, right at 600 shelters. People got into shelters, which is really a positive. I, uh, by shutting down the schools, I shut down all the schools Friday through Monday, allowed us to open up more shelters faster. Uh, now, it, you know, it made it a little harder when the, when the storm moved to the west because we had to react very quick to do that. But, but the local communities did that. Hi, uh, American Red, Red Cross came down. Thousands of vol people volunteered. Uh, nurses showed up to help take care of our special needs patients. But let me tell you, there's a lot of work to do. We've got, I've had phone calls all day long about um, nursing homes and uh, uh, assisted living that don't have their power. And so we've got to work hard to get them their power back. Uh, you know, so we're, I know I've talked to the utilities today. They're, they're doing it based on the biggest needs first. Uh, so there's, um, there's, there's some, you know, there's still a lot of work to do. The keys, not having uh, water right now, not having sewer, not having electricity. I mean, that's going to take. That's. I mean, how, how can you live there? What is the message that you should be concerned with right now, especially as people try to recover and get back in? Don't get hurt. First off, I mean, don't, don't do foolish things that you're going to get hurt. We have some hospitals that evacuated. Um, we have, we have, I went through Andrew and I had hospitals. I had hospital completely demolished with Andrew. We'd evacuated hospitals. So if you really, so they have employees that are not back to work yet. So you know our hospitals are not fully staffed. So our emergency rooms are not going to be fully staffed. So we, you've got to be really cautious um, of, uh, of what you're doing. And, uh, but I know we, we, we did daily calls with our hospitals, with their nursing homes. Everybody evacuated. We tried to work with them to make sure they got plans together how to get started again. Because I remember after Andrew, it's very difficult to restaff a hospital because you have employees without homes. I had back then. I think I had over 500 employees without homes. And how do you get them back to work when they they don't even have their own house? So it's 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 going to take a while for our, our healthcare community to get back to get back to work. Governor, is the flooding unprecedented from Jacksonville all the way down? I, you know, I haven't seen all of it, uh, but Jacksonville is, I know Jacksonville is historic flooding that right now. It's going to take a long time for that flooding to get out. If you look at places where, where, uh, and I haven't seen the flooding, I, I, uh, but Pasco County, the flooding, and some of the flooding comes in a day later, right? Right. Um, the, there is one, uh, there is a positive that happened. You remember we were worried about, about the, um, the water spilling over the dike uh, where they're doing the repairs, where we evacuate all the communities down there. The initial assessment is, is more positive than that. They didn't get the win they thought. So, but that, that was just the early assessment. Uh, I'll get a briefing this afternoon, but hopefully that means we got less flooding there. Now their, their issue I'm sure is gonna be like all of us is that you don't have power. So, but we, we evacuated a lot of communities ar around, uh, around the dike. So it's gonna be, it's gonna continue to be important to get that dike fixed. We don't have the way we don't have any estimate as what's going to cost. The the, um, the way it works is we uh, we do it by county and they and then it rolls up through. Uh, it'll start it'll start with their emergency management teams and they'll they'll come and we'll have assessment teams that go out and help them. Uh, FEMA will be part of that and so and we'll all work together to to, to do to come up with the number. So today, some of the residents were kind of browsing, and I apologize for sitting uh, uh, in the back, but browsing about. Uh, the news media and mentioned you and others possibly whipping them up, stirring them up in alarm as this one was coming. This is folks down in South Bay saying, hey, it, it wasn't a catastrophe. And we were hearing on TV there was going to be total obliteration. Can you just address that? I mean, how do you frame the message in advance of the school, knowing it could be really bad, but also it may not be fast? Well, I think I think you have to you have to listen to your local officials. You have to listen to the National Hurricane Service what they're saying. They're they're you know they're doing everything they can to to tell us exactly what they believe is going to happen. Our local officials are are, are you know deciding what they're going to do based on trying to keep everybody safe. From my standpoint, if we saved one life, it was all worth it. I, w I mean, every life's important. Yep. Okay.
Thank you very much, uh, Governor, for your leadership. Uh, I have the privilege of representing the Florida Keys in the U.S. House of Representatives, and I want to bring uh, Senator Flores, uh, who represents uh, the Florida Keys in the State Senate, and ask her to stand with me. Uh, the Florida Keys is going to need a lot of help, and we're blessed to have a wonderful governor and a very uh, effective uh, administrator at FEMA who is well aware of what the situation on the ground is starting to look like. Obviously, the president, the vice president, President have also been on top of this, and for that, we're very grateful. Uh, but we keep getting this question about how much this is going to cost, and we don't have an exact estimate, but I can guarantee you this. It's going to cost billions upon billions upon billions of dollars to help the Florida Keys, Florida's southwest coast, and obviously uh, some of our residents here in Miami-Dade and Broward County. Final County, press conference uh, to for today.